morning, everybody. Welcome to Live at 585 today on this uh, Monday morning. Uh, we are in Revelation chapter 13, and we are looking at verses 3 through 4 today. Revelation chapter 13, verses 3 and 4. He says, Then I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who is able to make war with him? Here in Revelation chapter 13, we're getting um, a lot of information about the beast. This is the Antichrist, the lawless one, the son of perdition, the man of sorrow. All of these are titles for the same political figure who's going to come onto the scene during the time of the tribulation. That's not good if I drop you. Man, during the time of the tribulation. Now, here in Revelation chapter 13, as we uh, get here to verse number 3, a very important uh, point about this beast is shared with us. He says, And I saw one of his heads, as though if I had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. So the Antichrist is going to be mortally wounded. He's going to be uh, receive a deadly wound. In his head, many people believe that this is an assassination attempt on the Antichrist, on that political figure, which would make sense at this time of the tribulation period. There's uh, plenty of people that are not a fan of the Antichrist anymore. When he first comes onto the scene, pretty much everyone's going to think he's a pretty great guy. But by this time, over halfway through, people are going to be like, whoa, this guy's not nearly what he's cracked up to be. Many people are going to realize who he actually is, and someone heroically is probably going to try to kill him. They're going to mortally wound him. So, uh, he gets wounded. He has a deadly wound, but it tells us there in verse number 3, and his deadly wound was healed. Now, if a deadly wound is healed, what does that mean? That means that either the Antichrist did die, or he at least is going to appear to die, and then he's going to come back to life. There's going to be this false resurrection that happens with the Antichrist. And this is really going to cause people to flock to him. Because all over the news, all over Facebook, all over Twitter, oh no, the great political figure, the Antichrist, obviously he's going to have a name. They're not going to call him that. This great political figure has been assassinated. Everyone will be mourning. Uh, doctors will confirm that he's dead. And then sometime, a day, hour, three days, who knows, he's going to be revived. He's going to come back to life and, and it'll be broadcasted everywhere. And people are going to be like, oh, wow, this Antichrist was dead, but now he's come back to life. You know, we got to worship him. But something that we have to realize uh, Paul tells us in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 9, he tells us this about this beast. He says, The coming of the lawless one is according to the workings of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders. The Antichrist is going to appear to do miracles, but he's doing it through the power of Satan and their, their, their lies, their lying wonders. But it's going to deceive, it's going to dupe a lot of the earth at the time. So just, And we see this throughout the Bible. Just because something miraculous is taking place doesn't necessarily mean it is of God. We see that back in Exodus with Pharaoh's, uh, or, uh, yeah, with Pharaoh's guys. Moses comes and he's able to do these miracles by the power of God. And Pharaoh's guys are able to counterfeit it because Satan is the great counterfeiter. He's not original. He can't create. Only God can create. All that Satan can do is counterfeit and, 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 and twist and pervert of what God has already created. And we see that happening during the time here of the tribulation. Say, uh, Satan through the Antichrist, through the drag or through the beast is going to be trying to counterfeit. So many believe that it's at this time, Revelation chapter 13 verse 3, when the Antichrist has this mortal wound and he comes back to life. Many believe that it might be at this time when the, uh, the dragon himself, the devil, 
actually enters the body of the Antichrist of the Beast. And now we're literally dealing with almost the devil incarnate, like the opposite of Christmas. When the devil is able to, to enter into a human that's put himself over to him and control some things. Maybe, maybe not. We'll talk about a little bit more why maybe that'll be the case in some um, later studies. But regardless, this beast is heavily controlled by the dragon. Verse 4 says, So they worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? What's the result of the beast receiving this mortal wound and then coming back to life? The, the globe, the world, starts to worship the dragon. Satan starts to get the glory. Satan starts to receive worship, which, by the way, is something that Satan has been after since the beginning. Since before he was cast out of heaven, Satan has been wanting worship. That's what got him booted out. He wanted to be like God. He wanted people to worship him, and God goes, no way kicks him out there in Matthew chapter 4 as Satan is tempting Jesus as Jesus is there in the wilderness fasting for 40 days Satan comes along and he tries to tempt Jesus and says if you bow down and worship me I'll give you the kingdoms of this world Satan has wanted nothing more than to receive what was originally intended for God and that is worship Satan has wanted nothing more than to be worshipped by man and guess what he finally gets it. He finally gets what he's wanted. And now here we see the dragon and the beast are being worshipped by the, by the majority of the population of the earth during the time of the tribulation period. So they worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worship the beast as the world is worshipping the devil and worshipping this political figure who is the Antichrist. This is what they're saying. And grab a hold of this because this is where we're going to end today. They're saying this, who is like the beast, Revelation chapter 13, verse 4, and who is able to make war with him? As they're bowing down and worshiping the Antichrist, and as they're bowing down and worshiping the devil, the people of the earth are proclaiming, who is like the beast? Meaning that like he is the best. This beast is the best, they're thinking. Who is like the beast? And they say, who is able to make war with him? He's so strong. He's, he, they even tried to kill him and he came back to life. Who is able to make war with our political figure? Who is able to make war with the Antichrist? Um, I know. I know who's able to make war with him. Revelation chapter 19, verse number 11. Turn with me there real quick. Because I like this actually. In Revelation chapter 13, the, the dwellers on the earth are pridefully boasting... Who is able to make war with the Antichrist? Um, I know. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is able to make war with the Antichrist. And Revelation chapter 19, starting in verse number 11, makes this very clear. It says, Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire. And his head were like many crowns, and he had a name written that no one knew except himself. And he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, that's us, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp two-edged sword, that with it he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself will tread himself treads the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Thus I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly uh, and gather together, for, this, for the supper of the great God has come. Verse 18, that you may eat of the flesh of the kings, the flesh of the captains, the flesh of the mighty men, the flesh of the horses, uh, and the flesh of all the people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast. Here he is, the Antichrist. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him, against Jesus, who sat on the white horse and against his army, against us. Then the beast was captured. 
and with him the false prophet who works uh, signs in his presence, by which he deceives those who receive the mark of the beast and those who worship his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, at burning with brimstone, and the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with the flesh. Revelation chapter 13 verse 4. Who is able to make war with him? Revelation chapter 19 verses 11 through 21 gives us the answer. Jesus is. That beast that they're boasting in that no one is able to touch, Jesus comes and he binds him right up and he throws him into the lake of fire. Just like that. Just like that. Why? Because Jesus is more powerful. Jesus is greater than. He's greater than anything. He's greater than the Antichrist. He's greater than the dragon and the devil. He's greater than you. He's greater than your problems. He's greater than your trials. He's greater than your self-doubt. He's greater than your sin. Jesus is greater than. And here we see Jesus in Revelation chapter 19 come onto the scene and make a fool out of everyone who is proclaiming back in Revelation chapter 13. Who is able to come against the Antichrist? Jesus Christ is. That's the answer. That's some good news for us today. It looks like the Antichrist is prevailing in Revelation chapter 13. It looks like he's winning. It looks like he's getting ahead. It looks like Satan's finally getting what he wants. But don't forget, Jesus is at work. And even though right now in the moment it might look like the enemy is advancing, even though right now in the moment it might look like the dragon is winning, even though right now in this moment it might look like the serpent of old is getting ahead, we know that the one who crushed his head 2,000 years ago at the cross is ultimately going to have the victory. So do not lose heart. Because right now in your life you might be in Revelation chapter 13. You might be looking around and saying, man, it sure seems like Satan's getting a lot of glory in this world, in this situation. It sure seems like darkness is prevailing right now. Wait. Revelation chapter 19 is coming. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is the one who prevails. So even though it might look like Satan's the one who's advancing his kingdom, we know that ultimately the kingdom of God is what's going to be established on this earth for a thousand years during the millennial kingdom. The kingdom of God is the kingdom that's going to prevail, not the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of light is going to get rid of the kingdom of darkness. So don't lose heart. Don't lose hope. Maybe you're stuck in Revelation chapter 13 in your own life. Be comforted. Revelation chapter 19 is coming. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Who is it? Lord, who's able to have victory over this situation? Just like those people of the earth are, 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 are singing praises to the beast and the dragon, saying, who's able to come against the dragon? Sometimes in our own life, in discouragement, we can look at our present situation and our present circumstance and ask the question, Lord, who, who, who's able to have victory over this in my life? Because it's been such an area of defeat or it's such an area of heartache. And we can almost say the same thing that these worshipers of the dragon are doing and say, Lord, you know, who's able to handle this situation? Lord, I've gotten myself in too deep. Lord, there's too much heart. Who's able to handle this? It's the same answer. Um, I know who Jesus. Jesus is the one who's able to handle it. He's the one who's able to make war with the beast. He's the one who's able to come into your life and fix whatever issues you're having. It doesn't mean life's just going to be sun, sunshine and roses. There's still a lot of messiness that's going to happen between Revelation chapter 13 and Revelation chapter 19. But in the end, God wins. In the end, Jesus prevails. The wrong shall fail the right prevail with peace on earth goodwill to men like that christmas song says i heard the bells on christmas day the wrong will fail the darkness is going to lose the right is going to prevail just you wait that's some awesome stuff on this december morning so let's close with prayer as we are just encouraged who can make war against the beast uh jesus can who can deal with this situation in my life Jesus can. Who can handle the heartache of my life? Jesus can. Who can handle the messiness of my life? 
Jesus can. Revelation chapter 19 lets us know he comes back triumphantly. He's able to handle it. Let's thank him for being able to handle those things today. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for this Monday morning. Lord, we thank you for your word. And Jesus, I thank you that we know. Jesus, as the world there in Revelation chapter 13 is boasting in what appears to be the victory of the Antichrist and the devil, Lord, they're saying, who's able to make war with these? Lord, we know the answer because we've read the book. Jesus, we know that you are. And it's not much of a war. Lord, you come back and you pretty much just whoop them. And Lord, that's pretty awesome to see. And Lord, I pray that we would realize in our life the answer to that question, who's able to handle my defeat? Who's able to handle my heartache? Who's able to handle my messiness? Who's able to handle my scatteredness? Lord, it's the same answer. The same answer for who's able to make war against the beast. Jesus, it's you. Lord, it is you. It's always been you. It will always be you. Lord, you are the one who's able to handle it. And Lord, I thank you that your hands are able to handle, Lord, the things of our lives. And I pray that we would just be able to realize that, to walk in victory in that. And Lord, to know that even if right now in our lives that we're living in Revelation chapter 13 personally, Lord, it looks like darkness is getting ahead. It looks like Satan's getting the upper hand. Lord, we know that Revelation chapter 19 is coming. Lord, we know that ultimately Satan's destiny is dealt with because you crushed his head, the serpent's head, there at the cross. You battled sin and death, and Satan has been defeated. So, Lord, even if it looks like darkness is prevailing, we know that that is not the case. We know that you have prevailed. So, Lord, help us look forward in faith to the victory that you're going to have in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hope you guys have a great uh, Monday. That's right. Jesus can. Who can? Jesus can. So hope you all have a great Monday. We'll see you uh, tomorrow as we continue on there. Revelation chapter 13. We'll learn more about this beast, about the Antichrist. Then uh, in a couple days, we'll get into learning about the false prophet. And uh, as we continue on, we're going to get to some of that fun stuff that everyone loves about the book of Revelation. The... Uh, the mark of the beast and all these things. So uh, continue to stick around with this. Read ahead if you'd like. Uh, but just remember today, you might feel defeated. It might look like defeat. It might look like Satan's getting all the glory. He's not. It's not real. It's a lie. It's a lie. He lies. He uses powers and lying wonders to try to deceive people. But he's going to be exposed. Jesus is the one who's going to get the glory in the end because Jesus is the one who can.